This week, we take a look at diet and nutrition. Join us for visits with Stanford University's Dr. Barry Sears, Eric Witt and Carol Worth, the body stat folks, Dr. Andrew Weil, whose book Spontaneous Healing made our critics' choice list, and Leo Laporte will take us into the garden. It's all here on today's first edition. and Noble booksellers. With almost 200,000 titles to choose from, Barnes & Noble is the book lover's second home. We're going to get serious about food and exercise on this week's program. Hello, I'm Rita Channon, and this is today's first edition. Dr. Barry Sears is one of the most successful swimming coaches in college sports today. He turns out championship contenders with a regularity that's astounding. His book, In the Zone, published last year by HarperCollins, offers some valuable tips about eating and exercise for competitive athletes and for the rest of us. When we talk about the zone in athletic performance, people is, feel it's some mystical place. Athletes blunder into it and then leave it. But we can really define the zone as being a hormonal uh, place we can define where everything is working in synchrony. And what the, we're looking to do here with elite athletes is use food as a passport to that zone. In this case, the person issuing passports to the zone is Dr. Barry Sears, a medical researcher who many believe is a visionary when it comes to nutrition. In his new book, The Zone, Dr. Sears outlines a program which is a radical departure from the dietary advice currently being dished out by the medical establishment. The difference is that Sears' program works, and the proof can be found in his unusual laboratory. And perfect stroke drill work. Perfect stroke drill work. This is the Stanford University swimming pool, home to one of the most successful athletic teams in recent history. Members of the Stanford swim team captured eight gold medals in Barcelona at the 1992 Olympic Games. And the Cardinal has won seven of the last eight NC2A swimming championships. The team has always consisted of world-class athletes, but in 1991, a secret weapon was introduced to coaches Skip Kenny and Richard Quick, a dietary concept by Dr. Barry Sears. The coaches tried it on themselves first. And I purposely went to the weight room and worked out for about an hour, and then I went out and ran because Barry told me I wouldn't be as sore or, and I'd recover a little faster. Uh, I mean, a lot faster. And, and it was amazing because normally, if you do something like that, you're almost a cripple because I worked out hard. And, uh, but I, I was able to recover, and I, that's when I... I, could, I was convinced myself that Barry was on to something. What we deal is really the hormonal consequences of food, not the caloric. And that's the thing that people have to overcome, understanding how food affects you hormonally. Sears' theory is that food is a drug that, when taken in the right combination, can vault you into the zone, but when eaten in the wrong combination, can make you fat and unhealthy. But the biggest departure in this diet is that fat is not treated as the enemy. It's impossible for dietary fat alone to make you fat. It's the hormone insulin that makes you fat and keeps you fat. And how do you increase the hormone insulin? You either eat too many carbohydrates in any one meal or too many calories in any one meal. People tend to forget the best way to fatten cattle is feed them lots of low-fat grain. The best way to fatten humans is feed them lots of low-fat grain like bagels and pasta. I used to propose a high-carbohydrate uh, moderate to low protein and you know to be honest with you I've even tried to convince people to have no fat in their diet or almost none which is stupid but I was doing it those people that are the most compliant have had uh, some pretty phenomenal results among them two-time Olympic gold medalist Summer Sanders who is still on the diet and making a comeback this year Another success story is that of Pablo Morales, who made a stunning comeback at age 27 to win an Olympic gold. And this is where the real battleground for uh, athletic supremacy will lie. Who can use food as their best ally 
for improving performance, if they're willing to treat food as if it were a drug. Because food would be the most powerful drug you'll ever come in contact with. Although Sears' book starts with his success with elite athletes, he explains in layman's language how his program translates to the average American. The book even features zone-favorable recipes. One typical recipe might be shrimp fajitas, because we're looking at a balanced protein, carbohydrate, and fat. And, but the thing I want to talk to you about is perfect technique. So as the Stanford swimmers aim toward the 96 Olympic Games in Atlanta with the help of Dr. Sears, and you aim at a fitter, healthier you, Coach Quick has some final food for thought. I really believe that in 20 or 30 years, Barry Sears will be looked back at as a pioneer in the proper nutrition. You can bet some of Dr. Sears' students will be making waves in Atlanta this summer. Exercise and good nutrition can not only help make you feel better, but be more productive in all areas of your life. We caught up with Eric Witt and Carol Wirth at the San Francisco Tennis Club, where we talked with them about their new book published by Penguin, Body Stat, How to Reset Your Fat Thermostat Permanently. There are kind of two parts to the book. The first part is um, explaining what the body stat is. It's the body fat thermostat. And that's what controls the amount of fat that you carry on your body. Um, and those mechanisms can be um, used to lower the amount of fat that you carry on your body. So that's kind of the first new idea. Uh, a, it's not a, exactly a new idea. It's been around for about 10 years, the idea of set point and body stat. But nobody really knows much about it. Um, the second part of the book kind of plays into that, that you can actually lower the body stat and lower the amount of fat that you carry on your body so you can become leaner. And the second part of the book talks all about the lifestyle changes necessary to do that. And it's, it's really a, a manual, step-by-step, uh, -step, how do you do this if you have a busy life and, and you have uh, lots of things to do and don't know anything about low-fat eating and exercise. Body Stat is the latest Be the Best You Can Be instruction book to hit the shelves. The writers, Eric Witt and his wife, Carol Worth, say they're living examples that it does work. It's definitely not a diet, and it's very much an anti-diet book. And that's one of the things that people have to understand in this Body Stat concept, is that uh, diets go against your natural physiology. And that's really important to explain to people, because it's so seductive, this idea that if you cut calories, you're going to lose weight, which is true except it always comes back and right. so this body stat idea the body stat the body fat thermostat explains why the weight comes back because we're, we're we're into making permanent changes right anybody can lose 15 20 pounds on a diet but who can keep it off almost no one and so the idea is you make permanent changes in your lifestyle and that translates to permanent fat loss that's actually another key point of the book is if it's something difficult to do it won't get done um, and that's really when we started to make progress on our own lifestyle changes was when we made them fit our lives rather than make our lives fit the changes. So it can't be difficult or it won't work. We, we still eat nachos and pizza and, and all sorts of things, lasagna, but we, we make it so that it is low-fat pizza, lasagna, nachos. And it tastes great. Non-fat, low-fat, what are we talking about? What is best? The optimum level is 10% calories from fat, but uh, that's not easy for most people to get down to right away. So instead, we've set two levels of fat, 20% or 10% fat in the diet, and set it up so that people can start out coming down to 20% fat, and if they want to, they can go down to 10% fat, but it's not necessary. You don't have to eat that way. You get some definite health changes and some can be dramatic changes in weight if you come down to 20 percent. The thing I think that people get stuck on is they don't understand what it means to eat a low-fat diet. They think that if they're eating low-fat they have to eat just fruits and vegetables and that's it. And, and what they don't understand is there are a whole array of very good, healthy, tasty, filling foods that can be very low in fat. Bagels, for instance. Not very many people think that it's okay to eat bagels because they're high in calories, right? But most bagels are around 3 to 5 percent fat. 300 calories but 3 to 5 percent fat, so what? Eat it. You know, eat, eat 10. Who cares? Just eat it. You know, you, we eat till we're full. Um, your body controls how many calories you take in to keep you at the, the fat level that you're set at with your body stat. So you don't have to worry about 
counting calories or keeping track as long as the food that you put in your body is low in fat. Carol and Eric share a lot of the philosophy found in Dr. Dean Ornish's book. Well, he's one of the real pioneers in this field, and he's done something that no one had done before. He showed that a low-fat eating uh, program, coupled with stress reduction and a little bit of exercise, not much, reversed heart disease. Nathan Pritikin claimed that it did, and actually Pritikin died with pristine arteries. He died of something else. Uh, but Ornish showed scientifically that it worked. And it, this has had a big impact on the scientific community, and it's had a big impact on insurance companies, for one thing, that now pay for his program. Exercise is also important to lowering this body fat thermostat. Um, because low-fat eating has become so popular these days, a lot of people think, well, if I just do that, I'm going to become lean and mean. And for some people, it does work that way. But for a lot of people, it doesn't, because another component to lowering the body stat is exercise. And we are genetically programmed to be lean. But to activate that program, there are two parts, low-fat eating and exercise. So if you really want to get the maximum benefit, you do need to add some activity to your day. Although it doesn't have to be a workout, it can be some other form of exercise. Looking at these two healthy specimens, one would think they've never battled weight. Not so. But I was probably a good 10 to 20 pounds fatter, and I mean literally fat, not just weight, but fatter than I am now. Um, when I was 20 years old, I had been on many, many diets and tried desperately to lose weight and became bulimic for a while because I thought that was a solution to my problem. And when I stopped um, being bulimic, I gained quite a bit of weight and had trouble getting, trying, to, trying to reduce it. So yeah, I, I've had problems with my weight and um, it really wasn't until I learned, it was Nathan Pritikin's book, The Pritikin Promise, that I read and uh, came to believe that, you know, this is what I need to do, lower the fat in my diet. And then I started exercising and, and that's really when I began looking like I do now, <laughs> you know, but I, but I had a problem. It can take up to six months to start seeing results, especially if you start at, at say, 20% fat diet rather than going down to 10% fat diet, or if you decide not to do much exercise. It can take up to six months. Uh, or, at the other extreme, we've had people tell us, and at first we didn't believe this, that, you know, I'm, I'm losing five pounds a week, and I, th I thought that was impossible in until I went back to some of the literature. But generally, that doesn't happen. Generally, it's slower. The idea of changing this body fat thermostat, it works, but it's a slow process. And so we tell people, be patient. You will see results. As the commercial says, just do it. Get started on that new program now so you'll look great this summer. And now it's time to look back at 1995's best books as listed in the Critics' Choice, a guide compiled by today's first edition and the San Francisco Review of Books. Later on in our broadcast, we'll show you how to order a copy of this literary guide. Now some tips on nutrition from Dr. Andrew Weil, cooking guru Jacques Pepin. Andrew Weil's book, Spontaneous Healing, speaks to the body's ability to cure itself. Healing is fundamentally a natural process. And that, you know, I heard, heard next to nothing about healing in my medical education. But my contention is that the body can heal itself, that this is a natural process. And that the best treatment is that which gently facilitates healing, which works with the body's own potential for healing. Finding the power within ourselves to lead healthy, productive lives seems to be the common theme of so many of today's self-help books. Andrew Weil is a medical doctor who says far too many doctors treat patients' symptoms as opposed to causes. Yes, I think they treat symptoms, and they treat symptoms by this method of counteracting them, that is, putting opposing forces against the body. And as I said, that's appropriate for short-term management of very severe symptoms, but it's not something you should rely on for long-term management of disease. I've always felt very strongly that the main business of doctors should be to teach people how not to get sick in the first place. This issue of the counteractive uh, nature of conventional medicine, I think, is a very real issue. 
you can get a feel for it if you look in the physician's desk reference, this great compendium of information from pharmaceutical companies that doctors use to prescribe drugs. At the beginning, there's a section in which drugs are listed by category. It's very interesting to go down and look at the names of the categories and see how many of them begin with the prefix anti. And we use antispasmodics and antihistamines and anti-anxiety agents, antidepressants. This is anti-medicine. This is the nature of conventional medicine. Those methods are okay for short-term management of acute symptoms, but if you rely on them for the long-term management of disease for more than a few weeks, for example, I think you cause two problems. The first is that you create a lot of toxicity because these drugs are by nature strong. And the second problem that's less obvious is that you can strengthen disease processes because if you, if you oppose a disease process, if you frustrate its expression, it builds up a kind of pressure to express itself. And this means that the disease can become more persistent, more resistant to treatment in the future, can spread to other systems of the body, can take worse forms. I think this is a big problem that we've got in reliance on these methods. Weil is working on at least the beginning of a solution. That is my mission in life. You know, I, I am really working to create a new field of medicine, which I call integrative medicine. And the whole purpose of it is just this. It's to try to train doctors to combine the best ideas and practices of conventional and alternative medicine. I like this term integrative because, first of all, I think it's accurate and it's neutral. You know, the, 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 the irony about uh, a cookbook and about nutrition and about health and about uh, diet book is that uh, in the last 15 years, after 15 years of torture, after 15 years of thousands and thousands of uh, diet books, we are the nation, according to the American Art Association, are 33% fatter than we were 13 years ago. So I don't know what we are doing, but it's ridiculous. The point is that there is a great deal of misunderstanding on this. You know, it's a question of taste, it's a question of name. I mean, if you tell people you're going to do a pound cake, which by definition is made of a pound of butter, a pound of sugar, a pound of eggs, and a pound of flour. That's why it's called a pound cake. People would say, oh my God, they get crazy. So people grate off a, cu a cup of carrot in it and call it a carrot cake, and people plunge on it. They are saving their lives. They're eating carrot cake. You know, so you have those type of things. You have people eating pasta in the last few years. Carbohydrates have a lot to do for the way we are because we indulge in carbohydrate, enormous quantity of it, with oil and stuff in it. And of course, it's very fattening. Uh, my mother, who has bypassed that whole thing, she's in her 80s now, still eat as it was 30 years ago when you didn't want to put on weight. They said, don't eat bread, don't eat potato, don't eat pasta. You know, it was carbohydrate. So she ate like a steak with a salad, only protein. She still does that. So, you know, those kind of cycles come and go, but people exaggerate, you know. I mean, they eat in the quantity, uh, you know, what's important is moderation. But uh, we are not moderate here. We get excessive. You know, we start something and get crazy. I mean, uh, years ago, people told you that butter wasn't good for you. Like, people are terrorized of a piece of butter, like if they're going to drop dead. Now, all of a sudden, they gorge themselves on margarine. Then the margarine turned out to be worse than butter because of fatty acid and so forth. So now you go to a restaurant, they give you a soup plate of olive oil. People dunk their bread in it. They're saving their life. I mean, it's ridiculous. So. Moderation, but as we say in France, what's important is moderation in moderation. And now, let's adjourn to the garden and meet Leo Laporte, who's exploring a new CD-ROM for gardeners. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know an aster from a hole in the ground. Uh, now I'm planting my own garden. I kind of feel like Martha Stewart here. I guess I owe it all to Stu Gaines and his company, Books That Work. Founded in 1992 by Gaines and computer programmer Dan Levin, Books That Work publishes computer programs that go books one better. The original idea was to build a virtual home, to make, to make the computer, to get the computer to the point where you could sort of have a home, your home on your computer and then switch things around. That's exactly what you can do with 3D Landscape. The program on CD-ROM lets you design your own landscaping using plantings, shrubs, and other elements to create your vision. Then you can move around your new landscape to see how it looks from all sides. You can even see where the shadows fall at different times of the day and during different seasons. According to Books at Work president Dan Levin, the computer can make you an expert in landscape design, even if you don't have any idea what you're doing. Well, there's this idea that experts are much more demanding than neophytes in any given area, and in fact, quite the inverse is true. The less you know about landscape design, the more you need the computer to help you. 
The newest CD-ROM from Books at Work, the Garden Encyclopedia, is designed to work with or without 3D landscape. Garden Encyclopedia is really its complement. It's a right. database of over a thousand common plants that you can buy in any nursery across the U.S. And it lets you choose the right plant, flowering plant, to put in a specific spot in your yard. But the Garden Encyclopedia is more than just a list of plants. Be sure you don't scrape off the hormone when you drop them into the rooting medium. The really interesting thing here was to try and understand what you could do with the computer that was different fundamentally from what's on print. Right. You can specify criteria for a planting. Let's say red vegetables that can take direct sun. And the encyclopedia will find every match from its huge database. The encyclopedia will also make recommendations depending on what part of the country you live in and the kind of climate you have. And just like a printed encyclopedia, the garden encyclopedia on CD-ROM is a lot of fun to browse through. What we're really doing is computer-aided design for consumers, or I guess you could call it consumer-aided design. 3D Landscape and the Garden Encyclopedia from Books at Work are two programs that will help you plant the perfect garden. These Books at Work CD-ROMs have really made landscaping fun. Now, if only I could figure out a way to get the computer to mow the lawn. For today's first edition, I'm Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this special about diet and nutrition on today's first edition. Each week, we search through the hundreds of new books and new media to present the best to you on our program. Next week, we'll try to tickle your funny bone with a special featuring some of the funniest people we've met over the last few months. So I'm doing my impression of Bob Dole ordering breakfast is my new impression. You want to hear it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bob Dole with, wants to... Wants to scramble eggs, but don't undercook the scrambled eggs for Bob Dole. Bob Dole doesn't like his eggs runny. And give me some toast. Give Bob Dole some toast. And don't uh, put some, spread some butter on the toast for Bob Dole. Bob Dole can't spread butter on his toast. So they called me up, knowing I was a newspaper columnist, and asked me, would you like to drive the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile for a day? And I said, heck yes. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the Wienermobile. I wanted to pick my son up at junior high school. And, um, because there he is, he's in pre peer pressure hell. And um, so I will never forget the moment when I pulled up and there's a um, you know, the moms in minivans, basically, lined up, a big long line, and there is the giant hot dog <laughs> with a loudspeaker going, Rob Berry, please report to the Wienermobile. <laughs> and I was fortunate enough to see his face when he made eye contact with the Wienermobile, or Wiener contact, and uh, if a, he was 13, if a 13-year-old could have a heart attack, uh, <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, yes, but you scarred him psychologically for life. And I'm saying, yes, maybe so, but it was worth it. Yeah. Lead a life that, that's fun rather than leading a life that, that's, that's online, virtually, virtual and non-existent. Does that answer your question? And from that germinated this book, Silicon Snake Oil, which is a most excellent book and is available, <laughs> and is available at essentially all bookstores. Yes, uh, you should buy, um, um, everyone should go out and buy two copies of this book. Two, two, two books in one. Lights down, slides. Oh, okay. This is a, well, I'm from Boulder, which is kind of new age. This is Raptor Red, a Utah Raptor, reading about herself in the book Jurassic Park, taking a break from digging herself up. For scale, as they do at Berkeley, we use a dead graduate student. See? <laughs> There are many uses for dead graduate students, but dang, precious few for live ones. It means, of course, terrible lizard. It was coined by this chap. <laughs> That's Sir Richard Owen, who was knighted by Queen Victoria. The, the photograph was taken 11 days after his death, an event, <laughs> an event his friends said did not affect his sense of humor one way or the other. And a look at Hollywood. Truth is, you might get so engrossed in Cinemania that you never make it to the movie store. On today's first edition, I'm Rita Channon. We welcome your comments and suggestions here at today's first edition. Please call our 24-hour comment line at area code 
415-437-6696. That's 415-437-6696. We look forward to hearing from you. If you love books as much as we do, you'll want to subscribe to our companion publication, The Review, which aspires to be the definitive guide to the personalities and trends that color our literary scene. A one-year subscription to The Review will bring you six issues covering a rich range of authors and titles, from the latest first-time novelists to the most talked about literary stars. When you order now, you'll receive The Critic's Choice, a compilation of the best books of 1995 as a gift. To order, call 1-800-671-IDEA and have your credit card handy. Major funding provided by Barnes & Noble Booksellers. With almost 200,000 titles to choose from, Barnes & Noble is the book lover's second home. If you don't know a roundhouse from a wheel kick, you might ask Tim Wiegand. He's an Iowa State student who hopes to be on the Olympic Taekwondo team this summer. Just for kicks, watch Living in Iowa tonight at 7.30.